I'd like to talk a little bit about technique, a little bit. Um, like I say, the reason I don't usually dive very deeply into technique is because uh, it might not be the thing for you. And I, I feel a little, um, I'm comfortable teaching a technique that might not be natural or, or, or organic to you. So what I, what I prefer to talk about in the realm of technique is how to, how to actually find within yourself the technique that feels organic and natural to you. There isn't one technique. You're going to, you know, you, as you can tell, you see there's many different kinds of players and some guys hold their picks like this and some like that and some vibrate notes like this and some like this. Now, there are certain things, bad habits that you can get into that I, I can talk about, but really opening yourself up to your own instincts is the best way to discover the best technique for you. Because I can show you my technique, and you might find some inspiration in it, but you're going to be most comfortable playing your own technique. So, um, but there is one thing about technique that I, I'd like to just talk about. That's that uh, if hopefully uh, will resonate with you, because I believe it's very important. Now, there's a lot of emphasis on technique. Uh, playing an instrument, and rightfully so. But really, the level of technique that you need is based on what your needs are to express yourself. Some people like a lot of technique. Some people just need a little to get their point across. Nobody's keeping score, unless you're voting in a guitar magazine. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, technique is important. And I'm going to go through certain things that I went through when I was younger in developing my technique to look out for. But more important than the technique is going deeper than the technique. And, and I'll explain that. In any field, whether it's sports, music, business, anything, there's a period that you go through where you are uh, focusing on building, uh, preparing the vessel, so to speak. If you're, a, if you're uh, interested in a sport, baseball, basketball, you're going you're gonna to go through a long period of time where it's nothing but hard work. It's the 10,000 hour rule, you know? Same thing applies in business. You need to learn the ropes of business. You need to understand economics, uh, understand your audience, understand the infrastructure of any particular business that you're in. There is never enough research you can do. You can always do more. And in, a, in the field of music, the, your uh, need for technique will vary greatly depending on what it is you want to achieve. If you want to be a concert pianist or an accomplished classical guitarist, you're going to have to spend a lot of time preparing your vessel. <laughs> uh, frankly, to be honest, um, me, I... N music was always very natural to me, but the guitar wasn't. The guitar, I'm not a natural player. I had to work really, really, really hard. I always felt, and still do, that anybody that put in the hours that I put in on the instrument w would have tons more technique, f uh, f ability, so to speak, than I would. I was a very slow learner, uh, but I loved it. And that's the thing. It never feels like work when you're following your dream. When, when there's Passion eliminates time. <laughs> passion puts you into a timeless dimension of now. And there's no work in it. I loved every minute of those hours upon hours upon hours of preparing my technique, you know, year after year. And still. But there comes a time in every... Um, creative person's life, and when I say creative, everybody's creative. I don't discount anybody in any field whatsoever because anything you do, y there's a creativity to it, anything. So there comes a point, though, where let's just say you've mastered the technique. You have the ability of Tiger Woods <laughs> or the chops of Segovia or uh, you've gotten to a technical point, place in your playing where 
whatever you really want to play is virtually effortless. It just flows easily. There's no thinking. There's just confidence and command. That's what those 10,000 hours bring you. It doesn't have to be 10,000. If, if you want to be a virtuoso, maybe it's 30,000 hours. I don't know. <laughs> But the bottom line is there comes a point where all of a sudden something f starts, it, it goes from work, feeling like you have to work at it to something that feels natural. Now, this is where you got to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Be patient. Enjoy, enjoy every little, the way that you stay patient without getting frustrated is instead of getting mad at yourself because you're missing something, you rejoice in every little accomplishment, like I mentioned before. That keeps the momentum going, and the momentum is passion. Passion is momentum. You know, it's just that feeling of, yeah, this is, this is just, I love this, this is great. I, I just like this, you know? I just want to, I want to do this. I want to do this with somebody. I, whatever it is, you know, there's just that feeling of freedom and, 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 uh, and enthusiasm. And, and that's passion, really. It's kind of like, and, and it's, 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 it's difficult because a lot of young people feel, they don't feel that passion. And it worries them. It concerns them that they don't have a passion for something. In terms of that, passion is completely overrated. <laughs> it, uh, it's not something that is this burning desire for. It's just a, a real sweet, kind of enjoyment. It starts out as something, it, it, uh, your passion can start out as something as simple as, yeah, yeah, I like to do, I want to do that. I want to do that. Yeah. And, and then you start getting into it and then you find the enjoyment in it and there's a little payoff and it's almost like, it's almost like if you, if, okay, this is maybe a corny analogy, but if you close your eyes and you, s you smell a rose or a flower, there's this moment, a very faint, faint moment, where there's no thought in your mind at all, only the intoxication of the, f of the fragrance, right? You just feel it, and there's that moment when it's like, ah. Oh. That's like passion. It's a momentary excitement for something that then develops momentum. But you got to... Sometimes you got to start slow. Don't beat yourself up because you're not passionate about something. <laughs> Passion comes with the right attitude and enjoyment in what you're doing. Developing your technique is easy then. It's fun. But like I said, then comes a time where you have to go deeper than the technique. The technique is just your tool. It's the letters in the alphabet to a poet. It's not the poetry. It's important. It's vitally important. Can't have poetry without letters. But the letters in and of themselves are not the poetry. The notes in and of themselves and your ability to play them beautifully and flawlessly or whatever, chord, whatever it is, is, uh, is not it. It's the combination. It's the choice of. It's the choice of the notes and how they resonate with you on a visceral, internally visceral level. And what I mean by that is how a melody makes you feel when you play it, how a solo feel, how like when you're in that zone of improvisation, are you, uh, when you're flying high, you know, when you're not thinking. You don't have to think about technique. Technique is way in the past. It's all just there at your command and you're going this this only then can you go deeper than the technique and enter that ultra zone of pure inspiration where inspiration comes instantaneously in a seamless flowing manner that is almost unconscious to you <laughs> it just happens and the deeper you go uh, the more present, uh, I should say, the more present you are with what you're playing, not in thinking of technical terms, but just in the ability to be present with what you're doing, meaning listening, observing, and allowing your imagination to flow into what you do, that's going deeper than the technique. 
And uh, that's um, something that you want, now that I've told you this, <laughs> you, can, uh, you can experiment with it. But you need to get something to a point where you don't have to think about the mechanics or the academics of it. So that's my spiel about technique. Two levels to technique. One, the um, external uh, hard work, focusing, getting it right, uh, making sure the notes are clean, all the things that go into developing the technique you like and working on them until they're, in, until they're really bulletproof. And then going deeper, where the technique is simply just at your disposal, but it's not the music. When you go deeper than the technique, when you're playing only in the mindset of a technical level, you will sound mechanical. You might sound fascinating, because technique can be fascinating, but there's no depth in it if you don't go deeper than the technique. You'll just sound like a fascinating player. <laughs> and if that's what you like, that's fine. Remember, there's no rules. You, you, you can be whatever you want on the instrument, and being fascinating technically is wonderful. But to go deeper takes a whole different set of brain muscles. <laughs> It takes a whole different perspective. It takes first the understanding of it, and then it takes the experimentation of doing it. That's my technique rep.